Welcome back to the Skid Factory. This is my Toyota Crown. It's a 1968 model. You might have seen it before if you watch the channel. It's powered by a 454 cubic inch big block Chev with a Harrop 2650 blower on it. It's fast and uh, I love it. Unfortunately, it does use a lot of uh, fuel that runs on ethanol, E85, and uh, that makes it a little bit difficult for me to go cruising around in my area because uh, it is a limited supply. There's only a couple of service stations that have it. So today we're gonna utilize the Haltech flex fuel feature and retune it for 98 Ron unleaded fuel or gasoline if you're from America. Yeah, 93 AKI in America, I believe it is. There you go, 93 yeah. is 98 in Australia. This is Kai, you'll probably recognize him if you watch the show from Knight Family Motorsport. Uh, he is gonna be on the keyboard and we're also going to interrogate him about the wonders of ethanol and the sometimes the disadvantages of it. So yeah. let's get stuck into it. I think you're gonna hit it for a, uh, just a rerun on the current tune and see where we're sitting for power wise. It is a little bit cooler. We're in the middle of winter at the moment, so it may make a touch more than it has before or not. Uh, 713, I think was its best at 10 PSI on the blower, uh, is what it's made previously. So um, yeah, ready to give it a run and see what happens. Absolutely, enough to get you nearly kicked out from the track too. Yes, uh, it's <laughs> definitely, it's, it's enough power, let's just say that. Yeah, let's give it a baseline, see what it's doing. Beautiful. <laughs> Guys just run it up uh, on ethanol, what was in the tank with the tune that was in it when we when it was tuned originally. Um, nothing's been changed and it's actually made uh, 772 horsepower, so 58 horsepower more. And um, that might, that's not, that's not magic. It's just literally the fact that the temperature is much lower. It's 12 degrees Celsius cooler today than it was when we tuned it. And I felt that at the track last time when I, when I uh, raced it uh, compared to the first time I raced it, which was which was in the middle of um, summer, and it's just basically the term boost weather. It's just cooler, uh, it's um, denser air, and engines love it. So um, it's great to see that number, though, and it's certainly a good start to the to the morning. So uh, now we're going to uh, just drain all the ethanol out of the tank and, and replace it with um, gasoline, 98 unleaded, and. Um, start the tuning process again I guess what's the what's the process you're expecting Kai well so the good thing is with the health tech we we make the fuel model do the heavy lifting for us so we've put the injector data into the ECU correctly when we first tuned it um, we've also put the stoichiometric properties of the fuel in again when we first tuned it so if everything's working well we should it shouldn't be too big of a deal um, yep. switching it the things we will have to spend a bit of time on though is the ignition timing see what we can get away with in this engine um, being that it is making it's not crazy high boost and it is intercooled so I've got high hopes that we'll be able to still make pretty good power but we'll now have to tread carefully with the ignition timing as opposed to before we could basically tune to what's called maximum brake torque and we didn't have to worry about detonation because that the E85 at on an engine like this at such a low power level, the E85 it, it is so safe. It has such a large margin of safety at this power level that uh, detonation is literally not a factor. So we can basically tune to MBT, just getting the maximum energy out of the fuel, and that's all we're considering. When we go to um, pump fuel, uh, we're most likely going to be knock limited, so we're going to have to tread carefully with the ignition timing. We'll calibrate the knock control system um, and get everything working seamlessly. Nice. So that's the reason why people use ethanol for uh, high performance engines. Basically, it's very safe fuel. Absolutely. Um, Matt widens that tuning window um, of the power that you can safely make um, for a normal street driven engine, gets much wider on ethanol than it is on pump fuel. Nice. Just evacuating the rest of the ethanol out of the tank. Of course, there's much more than we thought. And these pumps are very, very aggressive. <laughs> Thank you. 
Oh, you saw a puff of smoke, so just checking. Before we started, um, I went through and we switched the fuel obviously, I then went through and made the appropriate changes to feed forward the changes in the map for the ethanol. Uh, so what I've done is I, we already knew this engine, I've, this is not my, you know, our first time tuning these engines, so I already knew roughly what ignition timing it had wanted this boost pressures um, to move to 98. So we did that, um, credit to the Haltech, because uh, when we've gone up and run it, um, like I said, the fuel model in the Haltech will do the heavy lifting for us and it actually has like even the first pull I could see I did a couple little sort of uh, ramp up runs and I could see that everything was almost bang on um, already uh, Did a wide open throttle pull the cars made it made 714 horsepower So almost exactly what it did on the hot day in December when we dined it on E85 last time um, So it has dropped about sort of 50 58 horsepower or whatever over E85 we expect it to do that um, but honestly, we're actually really not too far uh, away from being completed because, uh, like I said, the Haltech has actually done the heavy lifting for us in regards to the fuel model. And um, I've just there is quite a lot of background uh, in setting up the tables and all of the logic and stuff like that. But it just shows that when you do have that all set up properly, the flex fuel tuning is actually quite a simple task. So the 98 tune is done, which means it's also a flex fuel tune. So it will in interpolate in between. Uh, zero and 100% ethanol, uh, so that's cool. We can still use ethanol at the track and then I can use uh, normal fuel on the street so it gets better fuel economy and is uh, easier to get fuel, which is probably the biggest thing. Uh, one thing that we did sort of weren't really expecting today is to be reminded that air density is everything when it comes to engines, no matter whether you boost them or not, the, the ambient uh, air temperature and density and, and that is always going to be a, a, a factor so it's cool to see some more power out of the car everyone loves more power right Absolutely. so uh, there's probably a few things we can take away from this and I think you're the best guy to explain this Kai so yeah. fire away so I think I think we could see that once we did get 98 tuned maybe to the surprise of some people there really wasn't as big of a gap between the 98 and the E85 as somebody you may think um, and what that really highlights is that this particular combination behind me it's just not that highly stressed is that it's a uh, big block um, it's not that high a compression, it's not that high a boost, it's intercooled. Um, so it's got all the right recipe there to make power. It's not like it's got a restrictive exhaust system or any of that stuff. So what we're seeing where the lower octane fuel of the 98 octane, where maybe uh, on some engines you would start to run into detonation and we have to sort of run a richer mixture and maybe pull some more ignition timing and stuff out of it. Uh, this one, we are running lower ignition timing than E85, but we didn't really have to pull a heap out of it because it, quite simply, it's just not really that stressed. And so as we saw um, the final numbers were, I mean, it went, the baseline we started off with was like 770 two or something on E85. Uh, we ended up pulling up at 729 on um, on 98. And I was saying to Al and Woody before, I believe most of that will literally just be the fuel property differences in that ethanol as it comes into the chamber, we got a lot of a higher volume of fuel that's being injected into the engine. All of that fuel then goes through a phase change. It changes from liquid to a, to a vapor to be burnt. As it does that, it pulls heat out of the intake charge. And so what we're seeing is that we do have a natural density increase in the cylinder just because we're injecting so much alcohol into it. Um, and then on top of that, uh, ethanol is like as, like they say, an oxygenated fuel. So it does actually bring a little bit of extra power with it. So what we've seen is that essentially that is literally just the difference on an engine that is not detonation limited, um, the difference between 98 and E85. Very good. Lots to learn. There's always a fair bit to learn when you're hanging around Kai. Uh, so we'll, we will be doing that more in the future. <laughs> Thanks so much, Kai. It's really cool. Okay. Thanks for, uh, you know, chucking it up when it's a Saturday. So Kai's like done this specially for us. So yeah. that's you really guys cool. guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we are. <laughs> Very special. <laughs> anyway, it's great. 
I'm so stoked to have a bit more power on, you know, it's just bagging rights, really, because I can't really... <laughs> it's funny, it was always yeah. there, you just got yeah. to see it. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's true. <laughs> that, that power was there the last time I raced it, and I could feel that it was a lot crisper and, and felt better when I was going down the drag strip compared to the summer time. So expect that difference if you're in a climate like ours where there's a massive change in temperature. So It should be said, we could probably just quickly expand that. Um, the massive difference in power, I expect that on a blower car. And the reason being is because the supercharger itself, so the engine's an air pump, the supercharger's also an air pump, and the supercharger, it is just pulling in the air that it can get its hands on, i.e. atmospheric pressure, um, and it's compressing that, feeding it to the engine. Whereas with a turbocharger, because you've got boost controllers and wastegates and stuff, a lot of the time a turbo car is a lot less uh, varied by the atmospheric air because what happens is it kind of creates its own atmosphere whereas the supercharger it's driven at a fixed relationship yep. to the crankshaft and so supercharger cars we always see a big change if the air is good the supercharger car picks up big time and like literally we actually saw it's making quote unquote a little bit more boost today you know yes. what I mean where it's like the pulleys are all the same how is it making more boost and it's literally just because the air pump on top of the engine i.e. the supercharger is grabbing better air so it can make more boost off it it's mint all right that's all we got for today i hope you enjoyed this i know i did and uh thanks to kai and danielle from night family motorsport our tuning gurus <laughs> cheers guys thanks mate cheers well, so thanks for watching I'm thanks for watching time. see you next time buy a hoodie please <laughs>